it's just really tough to not always know where the resources are going to come from yeah. to keep things moving, to keep paying people's salaries, et cetera. That's the most existential stuff. And yeah. I think in getting through some of the many, many, many of those challenges one after another for, for many years at Teach for America, you know, you kind of gain the sense that with enough perseverance, um, it's, it's going to work out. And, yeah. you know, so I think I just internalized, you know, a lot of perseverance and kind of optimism from seeing that. Yeah, yeah. One of the lessons I've learned in martial arts is that standing still is asking to be hit. If you stand still in business, your competition is gonna catch up. I start each morning practicing martial arts because it brings me balance and focus. And I wanna know how others stay motivated as well. So join me for conversations on business, innovation, and entrepreneurship. I'm Dan Schulman. Welcome to Never Stand Still. On today's episode, I'm talking to Wendy Kopp, CEO and co-founder of Teach for All. When Wendy was at Princeton in 1989, she came up with the idea for Teach for America for her senior year thesis. The ambitious and innovative idea to recruit young teachers straight out of college to work in some of the country's most disadvantaged school districts didn't go over well with her professor. But thankfully, that didn't stop Wendy from charging forward. And in 1990, at the age of 23, she raised two and a half million dollars to start the program. And today, more than 7,000 Teach for America recent college graduates are deployed throughout the United States to provide opportunity for all children. Her most recent project, Teach for All, is expanding this mission globally. Wendy, it's a pleasure to have you here, and I look forward to our discussion. Thanks for joining me. It's so great to be here. Yep. So a lot of people probably don't know, but we've known each other for a long, long time. In fact, I was on the board uh, for Teach for America. We were trying to figure out how long it's been, uh, at least 15, 20 years yeah. ago. Um, and it's been almost 30 years since you founded Teach for America and 10 years since you expanded that mission to Teach for All, that mm -hmm. network. Um, and, but for many people watching us today, um, they may not be as familiar with Teach for America or Teach for All that you're doing right mm -hmm. now. Can you tell our audience a bit about the global scope of your work? Absolutely. So um, about, I mean, I had my head down and was just focused on making Teach for America bigger and better until about 12 years ago. Yep. And that year, there was something in the water in the rest of the world I met 13 people from India to Lebanon to China to Chile who were just determined to do something similar in their countries, and they were looking for help. And that's what ultimately led to the launch of Teach for All as a network of independent, locally-led organizations mm -hmm. in now 48 countries wow. in every region of the world and growing, you know, from Teach for India to Teach for Uganda to Teach for, you know, to Enseña Peru and Enseña Chile, et cetera. Yeah. Um, and all of these organizations share a common purpose, which we define as to develop collective leadership to ensure all children fulfill their potential. And so they work to galvanize the rising generation of you know, most promising future leaders in mm -hmm. their countries to channel their energy into this arena of working with the most marginalized kids in their countries through initially committing two years to teach in, in very kind of under-resourced communities but then knowing that those two years are going to fuel a lifetime of leadership and advocacy in pursuit of expanding opportunity for all children. Yeah. I remember um, in our early board meetings uh, just um, how difficult it was actually to, um, to start um, and to have all of the success that eventually Teach for America had and Teach for All uh, happened did you find that the lessons that you learned at Teach for America helped in each of those countries to develop more quickly than we were able to uh, with Teach for America? 
I do think we're seeing that. Absolutely. And that's the idea behind Teach for All is that actually, I mean, very early on in, in the global journey, yeah. we started realizing just how similar the root issues that hold all of us back are. I mean, everything from the, the actual root causes of the inequities we're working to address to the challenges each of these organizations have in scaling up and building strong organizations and developing strong programs. So absolutely. I mean, I would say, though, that these organizations are moving faster, not mm -hmm. only because of the lessons learned from Teach for America and Teach First, which launched 15 years ago yep. in the UK and worked with us to launch Teach for All, but because of the lessons they're all learning from each other. I mean, yeah. we're learning as much from these new organizations that have launched in the last decade as, as they're learning from the original, um, you know, the two kind of earliest launches. Um, and I would say even Teach for America is learning from some of oh, sure. these organizations yeah. launched in the last decade. Yeah. What um, advice and counsel uh, and maybe even what is the um, value proposition? How do you sell to these recent college graduates around the world um, the promise of what Teach for All is and the promise of what they can accomplish? Mm. What's, what's that message that mm. you try to get across to them? Um, is it hard to recruit or are you overwhelmed with uh, the numbers that are coming in and then you're having to maybe call that down to like that's what happened a, in the U.S.? It's a little of both. I will yeah. say, I mean, we are seeing, you know, I think this proposition just resonates with a certain group of the rising generation of yeah. folks out there in all these different countries who want to be part of something larger you know, want to build the future of their countries, yeah. you know? Um, and we're honestly seeing the same movie playing in all these different countries so in terms of just yep. thousands of incredibly talented people who have so many other career options who are, you know, competing to channel their energy in this direction. I, I was just in Uganda and met the first 17 Teach for Uganda fellows, mm -hmm. you know, selected from 600 because yeah. it was all the resources they had to to select, um, you know, and I still remember meeting this gentleman, Charles Abore, who was the 10th kid in his family, grew up in a refugee camp all his life, mm. overcame every odd, went to the, you know, one of the largest STEM universities with 40,000 kids in Uganda, became the student body president, has an offer from PwC and various other companies, and hears about Teach for Uganda and says, that's what I want to do. Yeah. Like there's a certain group of people who this is going to resonate with them. And you know what? It's going to matter to Uganda that this guy chose to do this. And because it's going to influence not only the kids he's working with now, but every decision he makes after this. Yeah. You know, in the end, Ugandans are going to need to solve Uganda's problems. And we need to make a really intentional effort to cultivate the future leadership there to take on these extremely pressing social issues. Yeah. It, um, you know, I've traveled all around the world as well, and uh, it's interesting to me, I mean, you hear a lot in today's environment about nationalism and that kind of thing, but the more I travel around the world, the more I feel like we're more interconnected and people are much more similar uh, than mm. different. When I walk along the Bund in Shanghai or uh, I walk along the West Side uh, here in New York yeah. City, People are taking selfies. They want more for their kids. I yeah. just feel like this uh, sort of universal or global desire um, to make a difference and to help. And that's always been something that yeah. um, I found in um, the people who apply for these positions in Teach for All or Teach for America mm -hmm. are so inspiring. Yeah. They really they really are. It's was like my favorite part of the job, just seeing the best and the brightest be yeah. a part of the program. And it must just be so gratifying for you. It's amazing. I mean, one of my first reflections as we embarked on this global journey was just the realization, it continues to this day, that it's the same hearts, minds, and souls drawn yeah. to this work in every country in the Love world. That. I mean, it does not matter. I can be in, you know, Bangladesh or Austria or the next place. And it's just like, wow, like the 
people who are drawn to this, the recruits and also the supporters, you know, yeah, the, the philanthropists, yep. the corporate executives who are enabling the whole thing, the governmental officials who decide, you know what, I'm going to stick my neck out and be an ally for this program. Like, it's just, it's the same people everywhere. And yeah. we're also seeing an incredible desire to learn across borders, yeah. which isn't really done a lot in education. Like yeah. We assume everything's so local. And it is in a way. I mean, we need locally rooted leaders to solve our problems in, in education and in and around kids. But those local leaders move so much more quickly when they're exposed to others yeah. uh, across borders and can see what's possible, what's working. So it's, it's, it's I, I agree. Like, it feels like such, I, it's hard to resonate with, like, the trends toward nationalism and yeah. growing prejudice when this is our world and we see the exact opposite every day. Yeah, well, it's inspiring. So I think about where you are now. You know, some 30 years after you thought about mm. this uh, idea and, you know, we look at it now and it's an overwhelming success and so um, inspiring. Mm. But there are, and I remember this very well, there are so many challenges mm -hmm. that you faced along the way. As you think about some of those, like what were some of the defining challenges that that you thought to yourself, like, oh, this this is bad. This is going to be very difficult to overcome. I mean, I'm just yeah. curious to hear, like, what were those big things that, that you had to overcome? Yeah. I mean, I think often in, and, and even to this day, you know, the challenges in finding the resources to do this work yeah. are the most kind of existential, you know, and, and there have been so many moments over the last, I mean, and honestly, they don't really end. I mean, I, if, if I was still, I mean, we really figured out at Teach for America how to get the kind of revenue machine going. I think now we then went and started something new, right. which has its own, you know, it's like, wow, I'm going back through all of this. But it's just really tough to not always know where the resources are going to come from yeah. to keep things moving to keep paying people's salaries, et cetera. That's the most existential stuff. And yeah. I think in getting through some of the many, many, many of those challenges, one after another for, for many years at Teach for America, you know, you kind of gain the sense that with enough perseverance, um, it's, it's going to work out. And, yeah. you know, so I think I just internalized, you know, a lot of perseverance and kind of optimism from seeing that. Yeah, yeah. Over and over. That actually is one of my biggest pieces of advice that I give people, that just being optimistic. Yeah. That, you know, nothing is or is not, but thinking makes it so. And, you know, it's my one of my favorite quotes from Shakespeare. I think having that optimistic attitude, I mean, yeah. not to be naive about it, because you have, obviously yeah. have to execute, but if you don't have that sense of this is going to work. Yeah. Um, it, it doesn't. I mean, I have that on one level and I've internalized it so deeply from all these experiences. And yet you always wonder, is this going to be the time right. that it becomes very tragic and embarrassing? You know, and I yeah. think for all those social entrepreneurs out there, like this is the experience, you know, on the one hand, you're you're going at it and, and there's no other way to be. But on the other hand, it's extremely stressful. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I practice martial arts all the time and uh, almost every single morning. And one of the big lessons that I've learned in that is that if you stand still, you get hit. Mm -hmm. um, and it's one of the things my instructor tells me all the time. And I've got yeah. to always remember that. Is there like a time where... You felt like you got hit hard and you had to get back up from that. Like, mm. it, I think sometimes those examples are inspiring for people yeah. that are watching. I, so I have a really perfect example of this, actually. I mean, I really couldn't agree more with, the ba with your premise, right? Yeah. Like, we just can't stand still. And, you know we think about that all the time and yep. teach for all like change is going to be a constant. It's like, no, it's not done. Like it's never done. Like yep. the environment's changing. We've got to change with it. And that's the way we're going to get where we're all trying to go. Um, so the example I can think of where it's like, wow, we didn't quite maybe live into that 
we were many years into Teach for America. And, you know, through an incredible amount of blood, sweat, and tears, yeah. and, you know, on the ground effort, we had worked our way to the point where, I mean, Teach for America really was the thing to do on college campuses. Yep. You know, we had 60,000 applicants a year. We were getting 20% of the senior classes at, you know. And accepting how many? Incredible institutions to apply and selecting a tiny fraction. I mean, it yep. got to the point one year, and this all contributed to sort of the standing still effect, but where for the first time, because it, it's very challenging to do this work. So really, yep. it's only a fraction of folks coming out of college who are really ready for this. So. Yep. But for the first time, we we had spent all this energy recruiting and, you know, we had to actually reject some of the folks who really met our criteria in spades. So that led to lots of reflection, like, is this even a healthy thing to mm. go out and inspire all these people to apply? And then, but at the same time, you know, there was this dynamic with the, with corporations. I mean, it felt like, wow, we had actually, I mean, I was literally getting calls from executives from big companies that were supporting us, really unhappy calls saying, you know, they're not happy. They're losing the people they want to work in their banks. Interesting. Yeah. Who are instead doing Teach for America. It's like, can we talk? Can we work out a deal? But it wasn't, it wasn't a friendly, like, this is so fantastic. Let's figure mm -hmm. out how to partner. It was mm -hmm. like, we're really unhappy about this. And I mean, that's so fascinating, right? It's fascinating. So, and so these companies, great, really. these companies yeah. got their act together. Yeah. You know, they did all the studies. They figured out the generation. I heard literally, I know I wasn't supposed to overhear this, but there's some study out there about the philanthropy problem. The fact that this generation really wants to make a difference. Yeah. And so these companies started getting out in front of it and they really figured out how to do this, how to you know, market to this generation and convince them that this is the way, you know, to make a real difference in yeah, the world. Yeah. Um, they put them on pro bono projects. They changed the way the world operates through these various technology companies. I mean, their, their messaging shifted and their timing shifted. Yeah. They started recruiting juniors and offering people jobs their junior year and summers. We, meanwhile, yeah. were thinking, wow, this is awesome. Like, we're actually finally winning, you know? And we didn't listen to that. Like, we didn't have our head to the ground. So, you know, if all the people have their offers by junior year. Yeah, who's going to come? So yeah. now Teach for America, I mean, you know, it's working its way back. And it's so great that their application numbers are on the way up. And they're getting more and more of these folks. But it took years to then get back in the game wow. and to get the kind of infrastructure and find the resources to actually start recruiting college students much earlier. But if we had been, you know, listening and learning as we, yeah. you know, are used to doing, and, and that's really the only way we've gotten where we, we are now, um, that wouldn't have happened, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. I feel now that um, companies have to stand for much more than just making money. They have to, their brand has to stand for a purpose. It has to have a mission. I do believe actually that if you want to recruit the very best, the very best of people coming out of college, coming out of graduate school, want to work in companies where they can make mm -hmm. a difference. But my view is if somebody can make a difference wherever they can make a difference, whether it be with Teach for All, whether it be in corporate America, that's something that we should nurture. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think we almost have a moral obligation to be leaders that encourage mm -hmm. that um, to happen. And I, I'll say this, Wendy, um, you know, you inspired me from a, from a long time ago um, in what you were doing. You could have so many stories about the things that you've overcome um, to get to, <laughs> to where you are. Um, and um, I really just want to thank you and uh, thank you for taking the time to be here. It's been a real pleasure. Yeah, and, thank um, you. And um, I don't know, is there something, maybe some last piece of advice you might want to give people um, watching this in terms of mm. how you've continued to be able to 
move forward, you know, have this mm. per perseverance, have this optimism? Mm. It, is it just part of who you are or is it something that you've learned? I think it's, you know, a few things, you know, I mean, one thing is just having a big vision, you yeah. know, and a couple years ago, we came together across the Teach for All network and asked ourselves, what are we going to work on together over the next 25 years? And we started considering where the world would be 25 years wow. from now. Yeah. And it's a terrifying proposition, yeah. right? Yeah. Like the economy is <laughs> changing radically, the environmental challenges, the Technology. growing conflicts in different parts yeah. of the world. And we started realizing if our students, if the kids in our classrooms aren't growing as leaders who can shape a better future for themselves and for all of us, like with the not only academic skills, but the values and the awareness and the agency and whatnot yeah. to do that, you know, there's no hope for any of us to reach any of our aspirations. And, and so we articulated this very big vision around, you know, whole communities in every part of the world, enabling all their kids to have the education and support and opportunity to do that, to shape a better future for themselves and all of us. Yeah. So having a big vision and then being out there in the field constantly. I mean, to the point about the Teach for America recruitment effort, if we had been out there talking with these other employers on yep. campuses. Like there's just no place you can't be. Like you've got to be out there in the field. And then finally, reflection. Like I have always kind of built in like real time to think like morning runs every day. Yep. But then like really like every week, every month, every few months, really stepping back on what do we need to be doing to get where we're trying to go. And I think all those things help us kind of never stand still. Yeah. I think that's a great way to, uh, to end. Wendy, thank you so much for being here. Yeah. It's a pleasure thank to you. see you again. Thank you. So yeah. good to see yeah. you. Yeah, thank you.